Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Well done, good morning. That was really good. Good to see you all for our Harvest uh, Festival today. You are all very welcome. So um, we're going to sing our first hymn, during which time I shall receive the flags. Um, and it's number 625 in your books. Please do stand if you are able to. Please do be seated. And as we come together to worship, we say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we think back on our week and we think about the people we've seen, the conversations that we've had and the things that we've done. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. 
Let us confess our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we have wasted the resources of the world. And we say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And please do stand if you are able to as we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please do be seated. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the goodness of the land, the riches of the sea, and the rhythm of the seasons. As we thank you for the harvest, may we respect this planet and its people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have our first reading. The reading is taken from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 9, beginning at verse 6. Sowing generously. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also weep sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also weep generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, he has scattered abroad his gifts to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower, the bread for food will surely also supply increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves Men will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.
going to sing our next hymn, a harvest favourite, number 801, We Plough the Fields and Scatter. Please do stand if you're able to. Please remain standing as we have our gospel reading that Susie's going to read for us. The reading is taken from chapter 12, beginning at verse 13. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus was teaching the people when... Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist of an abundance of possessions. And then he told them this parable. I know it's difficult, but think of me as Jesus. There was a professional couple who lived in Bedhampton. They both worked hard, earning good money. He was a project manager, and she was an accountant. Working long hours, they were able to provide a good home for their family. They wanted for nothing. 
They said to themselves, We work hard and we have all we need. Indeed. Our bank accounts are not big enough to hold all the savings we have. We should diversify and spread our wealth. Yes, we should invest in stocks and bonds to build even more security. Yes, then, when our nest egg grows, we can say to ourselves, You've, you've done, done well. well. You've got, got it made, made and, and you can now retire. retire. <laughs> Just then, God showed up and said, Fools! Tonight you will both die. And now who gets your wealth? That's what happens when you fill your life with self and not with God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap, they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you, by wor sorry, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why worry about the rest? Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart, your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you o, o Christ. Christ. Thank you. Please be seated. I think, I think Neville and uh, Nikki, as the uh, rich young couple, did very well, didn't they? So, yeah. So, I wonder if you can figure out what word I'm going to put up here. Don't ruin it that quickly. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Of course, I'm going to put up harvest, aren't I? Because we're here celebrating harvest today, aren't we? Have I left enough room, do you reckon? I probably haven't. <laughs> oh, it's going to be close. <laughs> Just about get away with it. Just about getting away with it was pretty much what I did the whole of my school life, actually. But anyway, uh, harvest, because we're here to celebrate our harvest today, to celebrate all that God gives us. I wonder what you're thankful for that God has given you. Anyone going to share what they're thankful for? You've all gone quiet now, haven't you? Life, life. Some people are thankful for family. Church family. Did I hear kids over here? Good health. And here, what about you guys? Anything you're thankful for? The correct answer is mum. <laughs> what about you guys? What are you thankful for? All the trees. Yeah, I used to like trees as well. When I was yeah, so there's plenty to be thankful for, isn't there? Because actually, God has provided for the whole earth. So have a guess. You know, can, we, can we do this here? We can do earth, can't we? It's a bit rude to have my back to you, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Someone's saying yes. Oh, well. It would be helpful if I could actually spell. <laughs> I once did this and then didn't have the right letters, but there you go. There we go. God has provided us for the whole earth, hasn't he? So out of, our, out of the harvest, God provides for all the earth. And yet we do know, don't we, that actually not everyone on this earth has what they need, even though God has provided more than we need. Any guesses about how many people are in poverty across the world? What percentage do you reckon? 20, I'm hearing down here. 20 is actually correct. Neville got it bang on. 20% of the people, according to World Vision, across our earth live in poverty. And poverty is defined as a state of deprivation in which people or communities lack access to the resources and basic 
necessities needed to live a healthy and dignified life. Now, I wonder what word I might put up to depict poverty. Any ideas what I might come up with here? Who's the best? Who can do anagrams really quickly? Did I hear? Starve, yeah. I thought I'd put the word starve up to depict poverty across our world. Because many, of course, are without food or shelter or water. Oh, I need an R. Someone spotted it. Shouldn't have got the person who can't spell for toffee to do this, really, should we? But there you go. There you go. Where's the teachers in the room? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, I thought we'd use the word starve coming out of harvest to depict poverty. And of course, when we think about people in poverty, we think about people like in Africa and, and India, don't we? We think about people um, in those countries, especially if you grew up in my generation, those pictures appearing on the television. But actually, you don't have to leave our country to find people in poverty. The Department for Work and Pensions, I know we're all fans of them, um, but they say that one in five people in the UK live in relative poverty. That means one in five people, 20% again, that you see walking around are actually in relative poverty, which is why today we support the food bank as one of the ways that we can reach out to them. How could we depict one in five people? I did come up with a word one in five people in relative poverty in the UK. What word might we use for that? I came up with this word. I think one in five people across our country and across the world being in poverty when God has provided more than enough must bring him to tears. If you look at Jesus, Jesus had great compassion for those who had little. Even though Jesus himself would have lived in what we might have thought was an impoverished world, Jesus himself would have been way poorer than we were, and yet he had compassion on those who had less. And so that, that story that Susie read, when the two brothers come to Jesus and they say to him, Jesus, can you tell my brother to give me my inheritance properly? I need more than him. What was Jesus' response? He didn't, like many rabbis, solve the problem. He actually solved the bigger problem. He talked to them about their priorities in life. He talked to them about, actually, that's not important compared to other things. It's a big challenge for all of us, isn't it? Whether we are a young child or whether we are older, our priorities in life where, uh, are a big challenge. Jesus said to them, he said to them, don't worry about that. Worry about your heart. I heard someone say heart. If you've been to any of our services over the last six months or so, you will know that actually turning our hearts towards God has been a big part of what God has been saying to us. When Jesus uh, warns the foolish rich man in the original version of our little drama up here he says this is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves but is not rich towards God he's saying actually if your heart's in the wrong place you will end up the same way as the foolish couple from Bedhampton another version of it says that's what happens as I read that's what happens when you fill your life with self and not with God. You know, it's lovely that we've brought all these gifts today, and I'm really grateful that you've brought gifts which will come up later on for the food bank. It's a great response that we have for those in poverty in our country. And I think Jesus requires us to do that as well. But actually not because of the food or the money itself, but because it shows where our heart is. It shows where our heart is. And eventually, when we die, Jesus would want us to have turned our heart to God. So I do thank you for your gift for the food bank. But actually, for me today, I want to thank God for his gift of love to me and you. 
where he has placed us in the world as well. And as I was preparing for this, the thing that I thought is actually, today I go home just as you go home with these numbers in my, our ears, with those pictures of people around the world and in our community who don't have as much as we do in our ears and our minds. I go home and the question I want to ask myself is, where is my heart the other 364 days of the year? Later on, we're going to be saying some prayers. Those cards, that, the flower cards you got in later on are part of our prayers. I'll come back. But during our time between now and then, let us consider what God is saying to us about turning our hearts to him. Please do stand if you are able to as we declare together our faith in God. And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our prayers. Okay, so um, on the way in, you've probably got um, a flower shape out on the way in. This is going to be our prayers today. What I want you to do is have a discussion amongst yourselves if you want to, or, or just be quiet yourself and have a think. What would you pray to God today? Just a simple one word, maybe. This person here has written a sentence. Have a think about what it is that you're thankful for, maybe, and write on there what you're thankful for. But also, maybe, after what we've been hearing today about others not having as much as us, what is your prayer for this world? What is your prayer for this country, this locality in which we live in? And you can write that on there. If you want to draw a picture on it as a prayer, that's fine. If you want to write one word, that's fine. If you want to write a sentence, that's fine. So what are we thankful for? And what are we asking God to bring healing in, really? Uh, so have a chat about that. And then during the piece, uh, we'll get you to bring them up when we share the piece together in a little while. But we'll tell you how that's going to work. So crack on. give you a minute just to finish off writing your prayers <clears throat> and then we'll bring them up <clears throat> So what we'll do is we'll share the piece, and as we share the piece, you can come up and put your um, prayers in um, the vases that are just here, so just move around. But we'll first stand together as we uh, share the piece. <clears throat> the harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of the peace. And do come up and bring your prayers. <clears throat> Yeah, that's great. There you go. <laughs> if 
people put them on the And as you're doing that, we're going to sing our next hymn, number 753. Think of a world without any flowers. Put them there. During our next hymn, I wonder if we could have some of the children to carry the bags up to the front also of all the food that we bought. So we're going to start singing and you can just bring all your um, things that you bought for the Harvest Festival up to the front by the prayers. Um, so we will sing our next hymn, which is number 205, From Heaven You Came.
please do be seated. So let's just um, give thanks for the sharing of God's gifts and let's ask for God's blessing on our own harvest and upon the harvest of those that are far away. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to offer, which human hands have tended and grown and reared. We give you thanks. Amen. So we're going to be using Eucharistic Prayer H, which is on page 15. And all are welcome to receive at the Lord's table uh, the bread and or the wine. You are all welcome. If you would prefer to receive a blessing, um, just come up with your um, service booklet so that I know that to give you a blessing. But all are welcome. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. Embrace us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat. In Christ, you shared our life, that we may live in him and he in us. He opened his heart and heart upon the cross. And made for all the perfect sacrifice to sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of him. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, 
Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and you share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ broken for all. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for all. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the harvest, with joy we have offered thanksgiving for your love in creation and have shared in the bread and wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home, dying and living. He declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the night we have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So I've got a couple of notices. Uh, next week is Messy Church over at St. Nicholas at 10.30 and a communion here at St. Thomas at nine o'clock. And we have our quiz night on the 7th of October. Woo -woo! At, uh, hopefully it's not gonna be too difficult. Um, but um, get, no. Get your teams together, it's teams of six. It's uh, five pound on the door, is it? Yeah, five pound on the door, teams of six. Um, and um, bring, your, bring drinks as well, I think. It's not on my list, but I just thought I'd say it anyway. Uh, bring drinks, and we'll have a really good time. 7th of October uh, at St. Nick's. Um, I haven't got a time here, sorry. What time is it? Uh, seven. Seven. It's on your notice sheet, anyway. So good. Um, and please do stay, because we have some harvest uh, cake and uh, tea and coffee, so it'd be lovely to um, share that with you. Um, so we're going to sing our final hymn, which is number 532, Now Thank We All Our God. So please do stand if you're able to. <clears throat>
May God, our creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, bestow on you his care and increase the harvest of your righteousness and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.